SBA, and we will look at each loan uh, before we will approve the guarantee. But lenders that have gained a lot of experience, usually uh, two or three years of SBA lending experience with significant volume, then they are granted the status of preferred lender. And that's when they have their uh, the authority to actually um, do the loans without individual SBA review. Uh, the way we monitor their portfolios is we do um, um, uh, reviews of the banks every couple of years, and then we're constantly uh, monitoring the portfolio. Uh, because the banks are required to report to us on a regular basis, so we know the condition of their loan portfolio. So the experienced banks um, have the ability to do the loan, and, and then they uh, only need to submit to us the information, not the whole loan for approval. So in a sense, they have self-approval of the guarantee. Mm -hmm. And uh, I understand that the first thing um, um, what uh, the lender does on the SBA is that they want to see if you own any real estate? Well, I think that depends uh, on the size of the loan and the type of the loan. Of course, what the lender is really looking for is collateral to secure mm -hmm. the loan. And every lender um, is uh, taught from almost the day one to try to secure their loans with good collateral. And the best form of collateral is real estate because mm -hmm. it holds its value usually uh, fairly well um, and um, it's considered a, a relatively secure asset um, that's a good, uh, good collateral for the loan. But that doesn't mean that SBA loans are only available to people with real estate. In fact, we do a lot of loans where people um, don't have a lot of real estate, especially our smaller loans, less than 50000 It's rare that the lenders are really going to be too focused on the real estate uh, with those small loans. And um, the, the other thing is, is that what is the real estate? Um, because some real estate um, has already a lot of debt against it from the mortgage. Mm -hmm. So there's really very little um, bankable equity in the real estate. Mm -hmm. But we often will do loans where we'll take a second position against someone's uh, primary residence. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll know that right now there isn't a lot of bankable equity in that business because they already have um, a first uh, mortgage against their house. But the reason why we will take that is that we know that um, by pledging their home, then they are making an extra commitment to repaying us. And that, from a prudent lending point of view, that, that makes a lot of sense. The thing about the SBA loan program is it's structured in such a way that um, all of the loans, we, we really intend that these loans be paid back. That's the intent of the program. Mm -hmm. And um, how would that differ? Um with an equity line of credit to the real estate as compared to an SBA? Yeah, yeah. okay, well, that's a really good question. Um, and sometimes for borrowers, if they have a lot of equity in their in their residence or maybe a second piece of property, they, they may decide that it makes more sense just to get an equity line because equity lines are probably uh, going to be less expensive. They're usually one of the cheapest forms of financing when you look at the interest rate. Mm -hmm. The thing about equity loans is that the, the chief underwriting criteria of an equity loan is the collateral itself. So you're only going to be able to borrow up to the value of the collateral. Um, the, usually the loan to value is something like 80% with most of these home equity loans. So that means the total debt that's allowed on the home is 80% of the appraised value of the home. In the case of the SBA loan program, the collateral is only a secondary security for the loan. The primary source of repayment is not the collateral, it's actually the business. And more specifically, it's the cash flows that the business generates. That's what we're looking for for repayment. So if the cash flows of the business are supporting the loan, that's what we base the loan amount and the loan repayment on. We don't really do it on the collateral. The collateral is just a second source of security. From a practical point of view, what that means to the business is it is possible under the SBA loan program, if you have a very strong business with good cash flow, that we will take collateral that will be less than the value of our loan. We could do a loan for 200000 and take a lien against somebody who only has maybe $70,000 worth of equity in their house. Hmm. But we would still take the lien against the house, and we would know that the house wouldn't cover the total value of the loan. But that wouldn't really be a problem for us because the cash flows from the strong business 
or what's the primary underwriting for the loan. Okay, so let's say an Indonesian wants to buy a restaurant. Yes. Okay. Um, and the person does have experience, uh, but what would be the better choice, either buy an existing Indonesian restaurant or opening up from beginning because we're talking about cash flow here. So, yeah, that's true. So how would the uh, SBA look at or the lender of the SBA look yeah. at this? Yeah, the, the existing business, um, so if purchasing a business is um, with all things considered equal, then that's probably a, a deal that is a little bit easier for a bank to do. And the reason for that is is that the existing business, if it's a business purchase, it has a track record of performance that we can look to to um, tell us what the projected cash flows will be in the future. Mm -hmm. And that tells us, you know, basically what we can expect from the business in terms of performance and how much lending and what the risk is, how much uh, we can lend to the business and what the risk is for that. On a new business, it's much more difficult because there's no track record, there's no past performance mm -hmm. to really look at. Now, there's some caveats to that. One is hopefully that they're paying a fair price for the business. And I think it's important for people to be careful about that because like everything else in the world, you can pay too much. And if you pay too much for an existing business, then it can be um, a, a bad deal for you really. So it's, yeah. it's important to make sure that the price you're paying when you buy an existing business is the right price, is the mm -hmm. fair price. And then it's also important to do um, a proper research and make sure that the information that the seller of the business is giving to you is 